Uh, Mr. Hefferney here. Here's a short video on simultaneity. That's when uh, two events seem to be synchronized or occur at the same time. So, simultaneity, since the speed of light moves at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in all reference frames, it's not really instantaneous. So, it is possible for one observer, like observer A below, to see two events simultaneously while a second observer in a different inertial reference frame would not. So for example, uh, let's say lightning strikes at 100 microseconds or 30 kilometers to the right and left of an observer in this ref reference frame. So if you take the uh, 30,000 meters or 30 kilometers divided by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, it's 0 0.000 100 or 100 microseconds. So these two flashes, flash L and flash R, will arrive at this person in the middle at the exact same time and they'll say, hey, those two lightning blasts or strikes were simultaneous. But what if you're, um, what if you're not standing still? What if you're moving? Um, which one would you see first? So that's what we want to find out. So here we got um, someone flying overhead. So at time zero, the observer B is flying directly over top of observer A. So they are, um, they are in the same place at the same time. But uh, observer B is moving towards flash R and away from flash L. So uh, will it be simultaneous? Close enough, maybe, but we'll see. So um, 50 microseconds later, the lightning blob flashes are halfway from the tr from the trees to the uh, to the observer A, and observer B has moved approximately 15 meters to the right at this point in time. So definitely, this this observer B will see. Flash, uh, flash R before flash L. So using a little bit of uh, linear algebra, we can just find out where this would occur. So there's um, a 30 meter gap, sorry, 30 kilometer gap, and the two velocities are working together to close in the gap, according to observer A, that is, okay, not observer B. And so uh, what's going to happen if you work this out is you've got your, uh, your 30 kilometers, or 30 times 10 to the 3 meters, you got the uh, velocity of observer B plus the speed of light together. So um, at 99.9 .9 microseconds, this person will run into the flash and it'll uh, probably reflect off them. And then the uh, person in the middle, observer A, will say, oh, at 99.9 .9 microseconds, this person got hit by the flash. Okay. And so um, where did that happen? At 29.97 meters, so a little bit to the right. And then for the uh, on the left, we can do the same kind of thing, just a little bit of um, linear algebra. Um, and we can also, oh, so we can double check again that it really did work. Okay. So now, if we take a look uh, for the left flash now, finally, sorry, <laughs> um, there's a gap, but uh, the, the, the light has to catch up to the person who's moving away. So uh, we're going to subtract the velocity. So it's going to take 100.1 .1 microseconds to reach them. And they're going to move 30.03 meters in that amount of time. And so it's going to take 100.1 .1 microseconds for them to see that. We can confirm it, double check it, and it's all good. Okay. Uh, to see if we did it right, just add up the times for uh, observer um, A and the times for observer B, and they add up to be the same. And same thing for the distances. So at this speed, we're not moving fast enough for any time distortion or um, length contraction. So um, everything will add up very nicely. But as soon as you start moving at relativistic speeds, that's not going to happen anymore. All right, so uh, here's our two reference frames. Most re reference frames are an XY axis plane with a vertical uh, Z. Okay. And we have our, our, we have our two reference frames. So in a Galilean system, uh, to find your position, it's just, uh, of, according to person B, it's just A subtract the relative velocity time, times the time, and they have the share at the same amount of time. And if you want to get your, uh, rewrite it using X and Y instead, um, X is equal to X, subtract your speed times the time. Um, and we're only moving in the X direction, so your Y and Y prime are the same, Z and Z prime are the same, and T and T prime are the same. So the person who's standing still is, is your regular S, and the person who's moving is your prime. So anytime you see a prime, like X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and T prime, that's according to the person who's moving. Um, and I like to write it with B's and A's, though, for, uh, for this. 
But as soon as you start including relativity, it's a little bit different. You have to include the gamma factor because of time dilation and length contraction. And so you'll see that um, instead of dA subtract VBTA, it's gamma dA subtract VBTA to get the Lorentz location. And for, uh, for time, uh, instead of times being equal, now it's the gamma factor times the time, subtract the relative velocity between them, the distance according to uh, the rest observer divided by the speed of light squared. And if you want, this is the more traditional way of writing it, x prime is equal to gamma, x minus vt, uh, y prime is y, z prime is z, because we're only moving in the x direction, and t prime is equal to gamma bracket t, subtract relative velocity v, um, x over c squared. So in, uh, also in other textbooks you'll see they, they use um, S or A or 1 depending on the textbook. So simultaneity, it also happens at relativistic velocities, a bit more difficult to deal with though. So let's, for example, let's say we have an observer moving at relativistic speed, like half the speed of light. Uh, what's going to happen this time? All right, so once again, just to show you that really uh, they're not going to see things at the same time. It's not going to be 100 microseconds each. Um, in observer A's reference frame, the rest frame, where is observer C going to be when the right flash finally hits them? So doing the same kind of linear algebra, we'll see that um, it's going to occur at 66.7 microseconds, not 100 microseconds. And that this person here will be, or observer will be 10,000 meters or 10 kilometers to the right of observer A. So that flash is definitely going to run into them first. And uh, when would the left flash finally catch up to them? Um, so that would occur at 200 microseconds and 30,000 meters or 30 kilometers to the right. So um, there's a 20 kilometer gap there and there's a, from 66.7 microseconds to 200 microseconds, there's a 133.3 microsecond gap according to observer A. Observer B will not observe the exact same times and gaps, unfortunately. It's pretty, uh, pretty tricky. You'd have to make use of the gamma factor. So if you're moving at half the speed of light, that gamma factor is going to be 1 divided by 0.866 or 1.15. So all lengths in the uh, observer A reference frame would be contracted by 86.6% according to observer C. And time will slow down um, so that one microsecond in um, in A's reference frame will only take 0.866 microseconds in uh, observer C's reference frame. So things are going to be a little bit different. Just to give you an idea, we won't do all the calculations. Uh, if we just take a look using the one Lorentz um, formula, uh, we'll have the gamma factor 1.15. Okay, um, there was a 60 kilometer gap between the two events according to observer A. Um, the relative velocity between the A and C is half the speed of light. It took 100 microseconds for these um, events to occur. And so that's going to cause um, a separation distance of around 52 kilometers. And that actually works out to be the same answer as length contraction. So, so anyways, um, simultaneity it shows us that events are not, are, that are simultaneous or synchronous in one inertial reference frame may not be in the other reference frame. At uh, slow speeds, we can see Galilean transformations work, but at high speeds, we need to switch to Lorentz transformations. So here's Lorentz right here. Uh, Lorentz came up with these equations in 1897. Then Einstein, who was a friend of Lorentz, as you can see right here, uh, adopted them in his uh, theory of special relativity. And if you are interested in uh, more examples, there's a great example here uh, by John D. Norton at the University of Pennsylvania. He uh, made this animated GIF, which shows how... Uh, What's simultaneous for one reference frame is not simultaneous for the other. So, for example, the two flashes arrive at this person in the middle at the same time. But um, this person here who's moving will see this flash first and then this flash be later. Also, if you want a really good explanation, uh, click on this link and you can go to Minute, uh, minute Physics. And uh, this person here has an excellent example of, uh, of simultaneity. I hope this helps. Thanks.